Good morning. Welcome home to Centenary United Methodist Church. It's good to see all of you this morning, and greetings to those who are following us online as well. Please silence your cell phone here at the beginning of the service. Make sure you read all these announcements, and just a reminder that all these inserts are intended for you to look at, make a note of, and then give to somebody as an invitation to come and be a part of our church. And uh, people are actually starting to do this. I'm, I'm seeing new faces. And uh, I'm being told, yes, I handed them the, the invitation for the feast meal. So this is exactly what those are intended to be used for. Uh, this is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent started last Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. We had two services with great attendance. The services continue Wednesday noon with Holy Communion, followed by lunch. The offering for those services goes to medical financial aid at Carolina East Hospital. you hear more about that a little bit later. Um, Caring Cooks has an important announcement. Just a reminder, they provide freezer meals for anyone you know who might need a meal. We ask that when you get a meal, sign the chart on the front of the freezer giving information regarding which meal you took, your name, and the recipient, which helps eliminate duplication so the same person doesn't get four of the same meal. And if you have any co uh, questions, please contact Mary Peeler. Uh, there's her phone number, and she is on the balcony at this moment looking at me and waving. <laughs> So please make a note of that, very important. Just have to remind people every now and then that we have that ministry. It's a great ministry, sometimes overlooked. Let's see. Uh, Paul, you want to say a word about King's Cadence? Yes. Um, next Sunday, we're so excited to have King's Cadence back with us. Uh, as I was telling you, um, KC that's in the group is a retired Henry Sergeant, a Marine. And... Um, this group is absolutely amazing. You will hear them sing some Broadway tunes like she sings Old Man River and various things. You'll hear like a gospel uh, gaither time, um, some acapella stuff, some kind of accompaniment type things, and it is truly a amazing concert. And you will not want to miss it. And to clarify, of course, it is free admission. We will take out your season offering to give to them. But also it says at 11 o'clock and at 4 o'clock. There's not a concert at 11 o'clock. They will share in our 11 o'clock worship, and then there will be a 4 o'clock concert. I heard many say that we're going to come to the 11 o'clock concert. I don't want you to be disappointed when you come, <laughs> and you have to hear me play instead of them sing. But they will share a couple of pieces in worship as little teaser, um, and then we'll do a full concert at 4 o'clock. So I know you will not want to uh, miss this opportunity. And on the back uh, is all the opportunity you have to be a part of the music family and please know the only thing you have to do is act crazy and love music and uh, you will fit right in but as always thank you so very much for your consistent and uh, prayers and love and support for the music ministry here thank you thank you paul so just a reminder what is this you make a note of it in your own calendar and then it is an invitation to give to somebody to come in here king's cadence during our 11 o'clock service and then at the four o'clock concert so please use it in that way. Those are all the announcements that I have today, but we do have a mission moment. And Steve, you'll come right up and talk to us. Good morning. Good morning. Pastor Van noted uh, our Lenten offering is designated for the patient assistance program this year. And uh, we all know that illness or health-related issues can put a heavy financial burden on families and there's great need in our area for assistance. Uh, the Patient Assistance Program is administered by the East Carolina Foundation and is committed to helping those patients in need. They uh, often don't have insurance and don't qualify for Medicaid. Uh, they are vetted and referred by their physicians. Um, the kind of assistance that they provide is in the form of transportation or prescriptions or medical equipment and supplies. Uh, there are many examples of the help that they provide. There are patients that show up at the emergency room and when they get discharged don't have any way to get home. The patient assistance program will provide a cab ride. Um, patients who are treated for heart conditions are often uh, prescribed Eliquis or Plavix blood thinners they can cost $600 a month and they simply can't afford them. Uh, diabetes treatments like insulin cost $70 to $100 a month. 
Um, el elderly patients on Medicare often can't afford uh, the prescriptions that they're given so that their diabetes and hypertension go untreated. So these are the types of, of issues that the patient assistance program gets involved in. And there is great need in our community for that type of assistance. And so we hope that you will prayerfully consider uh, supporting this program. Uh, cash donations can be placed in the offering plate. Checks, uh, please designate them for the Lenten offering. And there is instruction uh, in the bulletin and in the Friday greetings on how to give online. Thanks. Thanks. Friends, as I said, it is the first Sunday in Lent. May God's renewing grace fill you and guide you during this season. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to stand as able and turn to number 268 as we share together this Lenten prayer. O God, our deliverer, you led your people of old through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide now the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our hymn is number 61, Come, Thou Almighty King. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. Because Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, he made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, that also time were disobedient. When long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, where the ark was a preparing, wherein Few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water, which also, after a true likeness, doth now save you, even baptism, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the interrogation of a good conscience toward God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is on the right hand of God, having gone into heaven, angels and authorities and powers being made subjected to him. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the gospel. Today's reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from the heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Uh, This is the word of God. 
Okay, thank you, God. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> be seated. There is power in remembering who you are. Marty Johnson was the child of two college students who had a brief affair and then gave him up for adoption. As an adult, he wanted to know more about his birth parents, so he started digging through records and eventually found his birth mother. Then one day, he got a letter. Welcome to the Ogike dynasty. It turns out his biological father was an African king. And he, Marty Johnson, who grew up in Nebraska, was a prince. So he flew to Africa, and the people in the village ran out to greet him, shouting, Obiala, which means he has come. Marty, an adopted kid from Nebraska, met aunts, uncles, cousins, Brothers and sisters he didn't know that he had. And then he met his father, the king, who knelt before him and washed his feet in a traditional African ceremony of welcome. That is a fantastic story, isn't it? There is power in remembering who you are. Carlos was a homeless man in Chicago. He had brain damage. He couldn't speak. He was a ward of the state. He lived in a state-run facility starting in 1998. He used a wheelchair and wore a helmet to keep from hurting himself. Since he couldn't speak, his usual reaction to people was to smile and giggle. On November the 29th, 2011, something happened to him. One of the staff members went over to his wheelchair and leaned cl close and whispered the name Crispin, Crispin Marino. Crispin Marino. The staff at that nursing home had discovered Carlos' true name. And they had discovered that that day, November the 29th, was his 53rd birthday. When he heard his real name, Carlos Crispin, he stopped smiling and giggling. And tears of joy began to flow down his cheeks because suddenly he knew who he was. And he knew that other people knew who he was too. There is power in remembering who you are. Today as we enter the season of Lent, a season of remembering and renewal, I wonder... Who are you? Who are you? Maybe you define yourself by your looks and your health. I would be careful with that because looks and health dissipate with the years, don't they? <laughs> Maybe you define yourself by what you own. Fine clothing, fancy cars, a big home, a beach house. I would be careful. As those of you who have been through a hurricane know, you can suddenly lose your wealth. And you certainly can't take any of it with you, can you? Maybe you work long hours trying to earn a lot of money. Or you work hard trying to excel in a sport. Or you try to make the best grades in school, hoping to prove that by what you do, by your accomplishments, you are somebody. And I would be careful with that because it is a fact that there will always be somebody who is better than you. Who are you? Maybe you think that who you are is what other people think of you. You have the disease to please. Maybe you think that who you are is defined by what other people have done to you. You're living your life as a victim. Maybe you think you're nothing, worthless, useless. Maybe you believe that you're so insignificant that if you died, people would quickly forget you as if you had never lived. Do you know who you really are? What is your true name? 
We bear a lot of names in our lives, and some of us are even proud of these names. I'm a conservative. I'm a liberal. I'm independent. We like to wear those tags. I'm a southerner. I'm an American. I'm a Methodist. I'm a United Methodist. <laughs> I'm a Baptist. I'm a free thinker. I'm straight. I'm gay. Did you know you won't have any of those labels in the life to come? Not a one of them. Our destiny is a perfected home, a timeless new life where we transcend the names that we have allowed to identify us in this world. Who are you beneath the labels in the core of your inner self? Who are you when you take off your armor and put down your sword and shield and lay down your pretense and your piety and let go of your fear and shame? Who are you when you're all by yourself and nobody's listening or looking? What name do you long to be called in those lonely silences in the middle of the night? Who were you before you lost yourself and who you've become? Do you even remember? I know the answer to this question. God gave you a name at your conception. God wants you to remember it and accept it. 1 John 3, 1 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is who we are. Who you are is not how you look or what you do or what others think of you or what's been done to you. You're not the labels you wear so that you'll fit in with some group and feel less lonely. You're not the things other people call you because they don't understand who you are and the depths of your being, and you're absolutely not a nobody. There is no such thing as a nobody. Like God's son, Jesus, your brother, you are God's child, and your name is the one you long to hear, the one I long to hear, beloved. That is your name. Beloved, God has given us a sign, a sacrament, baptism, to help us remember this truth. The gospel lesson today is about the baptism of Jesus. It's the same verses I preached on a few weeks ago. It comes up again in the lectionary, interestingly enough, on the first Sunday of Lent. In the readings for today, the baptism of Jesus is paired with that mysterious passage from 1 Peter 3. As you listen to it, you may have thought to yourself, that's pretty weird. I'm not following all of that. That's strange. That passage compares Noah and the great flood to the death and resurrection of Jesus. And Peter even ties baptism into all of that. And we didn't even use the Old Testament passage today from Genesis, which is about God's covenant with Noah, never to destroy the earth again by water, the passage with the rainbow in it. All of those scriptures point toward a covenant relationship between God and God's people. One that is prefigured by Noah and God's covenant with Noah. One that is confirmed by Jesus and one that we enter into through baptism. Let me explain it again. Noah and his family were delivered through the waters of the flood. The world drowned, but they were saved on a wooden ark. You and I are saved by what Jesus did on a wooden cross. He freely gave his life so that we might be reclaimed and renamed by God. And the link between those stories is deliverance through water. We acknowledge that connection every time we do a baptism here. You may remember the prayer that we pray over the water. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. So they're even adding in a couple of other places where the people were saved through water. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. 
and he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Every time we do a baptism, we remember those connections, those stories where we are delivered through water. In many ways, we receive life or new life through water. In so many ways, water is life, isn't it? We can't live without it for long, can we? Water is the symbol that God has chosen to remind us of life. We're given life first from the water of our mother's womb. We're then given new life through the Holy Spirit. And baptism is the outward and visible sign of the inward spiritual grace that God applies to our soul to reclaim us as his. Through water, we are beloved children of God. That's who you are. And that's who I am. And knowing our true identity can sustain us through any trial or tribulation if we just remember that God has already reclaimed us. It's no coincidence that these verses are to be used on this first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a time of reflection and renewal. Lent is a time to remember who made us and who calls us to follow him. Lent is a time to remember who you are. I challenge you to take time in the next six weeks to think about all those things that you have let come between you and your true identity. Think about who you were as a child, what was important to you, what you were passionate about, what excited you, what you wanted, what you thought your future would be. Reflect on all those labels that you accept that cover up your true name. And own all of that, at least to some extent. And realize that you may have lost the person that God made you to be. And then, friends, remember the water. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Now, that doesn't remember remember the actual event of your baptism. I often have people that say, well, pastor, I was a baby. I don't remember it. No, it means remember the fact of your baptism. The fact that you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you haven't been baptized yet, friends, or your children haven't yet been baptized, don't put it off. Come see me and we'll talk about it. Your true name is beloved. You're a beloved son of God, a beloved daughter of God, a beloved child of God. Friends, brothers and sisters of mine, life is not about how you look or how much you own life is not about what you do or what others think of you or what has been done to you life is not about those groups you join or those labels you wear authentic life starts with remembering who made you remembering who loves you more than you will ever know and remembering who will be with you forever let us pray god through your holy spirit heal our memory this lenten season Help us to remember who we really are. And when we do, when we reclaim the name Beloved, teach us to be generous like our brother and our Lord Jesus. Teach us like him to serve you as you deserve, to give without counting the cost, to fight the good fight despite our wounds, to love selflessly at all times and everywhere, and to do the work you give us without seeking any reward Accept the assurance of knowing that we are pleasing you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to sing number 269 in your hymnal now. Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and please stand if you're able, 269.
Thank you for making us your children by water and your spirit. Keep us faithful to you throughout our lives. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise that through baptism, you clothed us with Jesus' holiness in exchange for our rebellion. Thank you for those who brought us up in the faith. We pray that the good news of Christ would be proclaimed and heard by our people, that many believe and join your family. We pray that the baptized people of God would always hang on to your promises and to faith, especially when we experience the wilderness of sin from within and temptations and trials from without. Strengthen us with your Holy Spirit so that Jesus' victory may be our victory. Have mercy on all those in need. Be with those among us who are sick, recovering from surgery, particularly those whom we listed by name earlier, and those whom we carry in our hearts and yet have not been allowed to sin. We ask these and all things through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray to you as one family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. challenged a little bit this morning. It's okay. 334. Paul, are we going to sing this through twice as well? I'm sorry? Once is fine. Okay. <laughs>
last. 398, first, first and last. 398. in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing that you can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts, with open hands. All God's people say, Amen. Amen.
Please remain standing and turn in our hymnals to page 339 for our closing hymn, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. Beloved, beloved, you were never promised that you would not be tempted, not stumble or fall, but by thy grace you will be saved through trusting God. Grace is a free gift of God, an ongoing gift for me, for you. You are a child of God with a glorious future and inheritance over which the angels in heaven marvel. Go now and live in the spirit of your baptism. May the quiet strength of Jesus, the humble power of God, and the pervasive light of the Spirit be yours today and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you for joining us in worship today at Centenary United Methodist Church. If you'd like to know more about Centenary, go to www.centenarychurch.com. If you'd like to speak to me or another staff member, you can reach us at 252-637-4181. Or if you'd like to visit us, come to 309 New Street in beautiful New Bern, North Carolina. God bless you, and remember, God loves you.